Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. I'm Teresa Elling, if you're new here, and I'm thrilled that you're joining me today for a look into a neutral minimalist nursery. My daughter Rachel and her husband Josh, they just had their first baby, and I was able to go up and spend about a week with them and uh, able to film some footage of the nursery that I'm gonna show you today. We are absolutely in love with Fitzgerald Monroe. We call him Fitz and he's absolutely adorable. He really does look like a mix of all of my babies and his dad. And he's just beautiful and such a precious gift to our family. This makes number six in our lineup of grandchildren and we are truly blessed. If you've been a subscriber here at The Peaceful Home for a bit, you may have seen the tour of a 100-year-old farmhouse. Now that is Rachel and Josh's home, and that is where we're gonna be taking a look at the nursery today, but I will link that video below if you wanna see the rest of the house. It's absolutely beautiful. Now Rachel and Josh are minimalist by nature. They move slowly when it comes to purchases, and those things are intentional and very thought out. They are quick to weed out excess and things that aren't being used or that clutter up their lives. And they're definitely getting Fitz started on the right track with his nursery. Now, I will admit the bones of this house give this nursery the best foundation. Uh, it's just such a beautiful space. The original floors, original dark stained molding around the windows. It's really a beautiful place. And the way they've decorated this room, I think really adds to it. We'll start with the biggest furniture in the room and then we'll go down to the little details of decor. If there is anything that I can provide a link for, I will do that in the description box. You might be able to find um, either the exact item or in some cases I've posted a similar item in case you're trying to go after this look. Well, any bedroom starts with the bed. And this was a COVID pregnancy. So unfortunately, the crib that they really wanted, they were unable to get with all of the shipping delays and products just being unavailable. Um, but they found a crib that they liked and it's very simple, uh, this nice raw wood finish. I can't remember right now the name of, ah, timer's going off. My daughter's making sourdough bread and it was my job to get it out of the oven. Isn't that beautiful? I know I have the information for these beautiful sheets. I can't remember the name of them right now, but I will link that below. It's the perfect backdrop for this beautiful knit blanket. And for Brownie, this was Rachel's bear when she was growing up and she saved him in her keepsake box. If you're wondering what that is, I will link it below. I recommend that each family member have a keepsake box. And so Rachel was able to put this in the nursery. I think it's so sweet. There's also this little uh, pocket caddy that can be tied onto the edge of the crib just for the essentials and things that you need to be able to grab quickly. Rachel found this gorgeous Moses basket with a rocking stand on, I believe, Facebook Marketplace. So she got a great deal on that. And it really is beautiful, really adds to the vibe of the room. Moses baskets are so nice because they can just be removed out of the stand and taken into a living room or into a kitchen, or even if you're traveling. The rocking aspect of the stand is really nice. I can remember the cradle that I had for my little ones. And sometimes I would just reach out in the middle of the night and tap it with my foot to get it rocking and get a baby back to sleep. Next is this glider that has uh, the footstool that also moves with you, really nice. Uh, Rachel got this second hand as well and passed it on to her sister who was able to recover it in this beautiful linen fabric. They recovered the seat and back cushion and the foot cushion as well. And then May also did a tutorial of the pillow that she did in the same fabric. I love the lamp that Rachel chose and I love that this is just a very traditional lamp. It's nothing cute or babyish, which a lot of times nurseries can go that direction 
and then they really don't last. This is a very classic look. This is a lamp that could be used for many, many years or even moved into a different room in the house. Is an advantage with not going all out baby theme with your nursery. This rug is the perfect bit of cozy to um, bring into the space. The colors again are neutral and add some texture, a little bit of depth. And this play gym is just so sweet. I love that it's made of natural wood and it's got options for hanging different types of toys. Another really great thing that serves multiple functions when a baby's lying down, when they're sitting up, and it can be moved from room to room. Two large plants were brought in and I highly recommend large scale plants because they really bring a presence into a room and it doesn't feel like you have so many little tiny things, which can make a room feel cluttery. Larger plants really give a, a solid, grounded, organized look to a space. Tucked into the windowsill is some artwork that a family member made for Rachel and Josh. And it's really nice to have custom artwork. If you have a friend or relative that is artistic, commission them to do a painting or a piece of artwork for you. It really adds uniqueness to your room. One of the things that Josh and Rachel chose to do was to uh, redo some old furniture rather than buying new. So they had this small bookcase and they also had a dresser and they painted both in the same color. A really beautiful neutral and I love these brass knobs that they used for the dresser really great touch you will hear people often refer to that as the jewelry of the room and it's really true just a little touch that's beautiful I also love this brass fox head uh, hook um, and there's some amber teething beads hanging here but you could use hooks like this for so many things and again rather than just something really plain and simple you're just bringing in a little bit more character. The dresser holds all of Fitz's clothes, all of the sheets, um, blankets, all of the things that he needs right now. And then the bookcase is filled with, again, some supplies, extra blankets, um, some books that Rachel's been given, and I'm sure that she will probably get through a few of these with nursing hours. That was one of my best times to read. There's also a really beautiful wooden teething rattle, and of course, Sophie the giraffe. You have to have a Sophie. I think this is one of the sweetest toys. And this teether did not come out until i would had all of my children. So I've enjoyed seeing my grandchildren love Sophie so much. Another thing that was in Rachel's keepsake box was this set of Beatrix Potter books. And they're so cute. Um, we read these when she was a little girl. It's just really fun to have things from your own childhood that your children can enjoy. Now, because this is a 100 year old farmhouse, you can imagine the storage is not great. It's very limited. This closet is tiny and they actually had um, these shelves installed on the side because it really wasn't very useful the way that it was. And so this adds a lot. Rachel was able to put baskets in here and label them with just a simple index card and a clothespin. But these are all the clothes that Fitz will be growing into. So she's divided those by size. They'll be really easy to pull out and put in the dresser as soon as these things fit. Here is the before shot of what this room looked like before they transformed it into this beautiful nursery. And I'm going to give you kind of a look of the entire room. I just wanted to thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that and hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Let's take a final look at this beautiful, neutral, minimalist nursery.
below on what your favorite part of this space was. The whole thing is inspiring to me. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me on The Peaceful Home. Have a great day.